I'm Steve Wilkerson, and I'm with David Royce, executive editor of the News Service of Florida. David, one of the biggest issues in the 2013 session is expansion or not to expand Medicaid. And uh, Governor Scott has said he wants to do it uh, at least for a three-year period. Uh, uh, the House Speaker, Mr. Weatherford, has said no, and we don't know what the Senate is going to do. Where are we with that? Well, this is one of the most vexing issues uh, that the legislature uh, will face and the state in general, I think, will face um, this year, uh, this session, and possibly beyond. Um, the, the, the question is, uh, under the federal health care law, the idea, of course, is you, you co everybody gets health coverage, everybody gets insurance somehow. And the way that the federal government envisions this happening for many people uh, who uh, currently are uninsured is that they would be absorbed into the Medicaid program, which is, of course, the taxpayers pay for it. It's, uh, right now, it's mostly funded. It's, it's funded more than half by the federal government and, the, and uh, almost half by uh, the state. And... Um, so the, the Medicaid would be expanded uh, to a larger group of people, people currently not eligible, like um, single uh, men who you know, typically right now are not on Medicaid. It's mostly women and children. Um, I've heard that in Florida that might be another 900,000 people, It could be, yeah, like almost a million people. So we're talking about a lot of, a lot of people who would potentially get health care this way and, and a lot of money. Um, in the first three years, the federal government uh, has offered to pay for this. Uh, 100 percent. And then after that, it drops off a little bit in terms of the federal amount and the state picks up more and more of the cost. We're still talking about 90 percent of the cost being paid for by Washington eventually. Um, the reason that many in the state, uh, Republicans in the legislature don't want to go al along, there are a couple reasons. The biggest, I think, is probably philosophical. Uh, just generally, uh, the government should not be running health care has always been uh, the, the mantra of the Republican Party throughout the entire debate over the federal health care law, and this would expand the, the government's role in health care. I think there's also some concerns about whether the government uh, is uh, particularly... Uh, able to make budget decisions at this point in time, considering the federal, government. the federal government, considering that they keep, you know, going right up against a fiscal cliff. They're in a sequestration right now that, you know, there are all kinds of questions about whether the federal government can get its spending house in order, so to speak. Um, so, uh, as you mentioned, House Speaker Will Weatherford says, we're not going to do this. The governor, obviously, he was an opponent of Obamacare, is what, uh, and, and he didn't want to go along with this either originally, but I think that Realistically, when the federal government is saying we'll pay for it, he he says I couldn't look out at people who are uninsured and deny them health coverage when it's paid for. But it really shocked a lot of people, even nationally, that he turned around on this because he was one of the harshest critics of, nationally of, of Obamacare. Of course, and I'll, I'll take him partly at his word on, on the pragmatics of it. Um, you know, we need to cover these people somehow. That's what the law says. Somehow these people have to get coverage. And if you don't get them into Medicaid, you either have to find some other way to cover them or, uh, you know, they're subject to tax penalties under the new federal health care law, which is what Republicans said they didn't want in the first place, that, you know, that's the reason they don't like the federal health care law. So now here's the federal government saying, okay, well, we'll pay for it. And some Republicans are saying, well, that's still not good enough. And they're, I think, opening these people up to these tax penalties. But anyway, they're going to fight over this. Uh, and as far as what's going to happen, I'm not sure. I think that you know, the political optics here are so important. Republicans do not want to capitulate, you know, to the federal health care law and say, okay, you win, the government will just cover everybody. They just don't want to be seen as having um, uh, bowed to Washington on this issue. And I, I, they want to try to figure out a way to get people covered without having to say they did it under the, the expansion of Medicaid. That's one of the things they're looking at. Um, they're looking at whether they can do it through expanded health exchanges. So the same ends, but through a different means. I think that's one of the things we're going to see a lot of wrestling over. I think the other possibility is that they don't do it, at least in the short term. They can't figure out how to work this out during this session. We end up coming back in a special session. There's a time crunch. Um, the federal health care law goes into effect in 2014. The budget 
that is about to be written and take effect July 1 goes, it's, you know, the fiscal year, tw the end of 2013 and all of tw the first half of 2014. So they got to figure out how to do that. But I think this may be, may be something that ends up getting worked out as we go forward after the session. I wouldn't be surprised to see a special session. And you could also maybe see some deal at the federal level in Congress on Obamacare. Uh, that could be part of a grand bargain. That's true. That's true. And, and there are so many uncertainties on this on so many levels that it's really hard to figure out where this is all going. And as you said earlier, the Senate hasn't said exactly, although they could this week, um, you know, they've been less willing to be out front about, you know, sort of whether the state should go along with this. Um, I will also say this. One of the reasons I, I'm sure that this played into Governor Scott's thinking on this, there, there's a fair amount of support out there for uh, the federal health care law. Uh, it's not overwhelming support, but it's not like, you know, nobody wants this. And I think a lot of people looked at some electoral numbers and said, you know, Governor Scott's up for re-election in 2014. You know, I don't think it's a coincidence that the states where governors, Republican governors, have said, okay, we'll go along with expanding Medicaid, are states that are in play. They're purple states. They're states like Ohio, uh, where John Kasich, the Republican governor, has done the same thing as Rick Scott. Uh, New Mexico, they, you know, these states have something in common, and I think it's states where they, they're a large number of Democratic voters.